Tesla's huge change in how their self-driving feature will work from now on took place faster than we thought with some unfortunate side effects. But the huge self-driving news from a Tesla once again slipped through the cracks. And of course, I will tell you all about it. The Inside EVs and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny will be here to assess the magnitude of both changes. Rivian delays deliveries, but is it really a reason to worry for their reservation holders? We'll answer that question. Lucid unveils its user interface with some really cool perks for your fingers and your back. The Cybertruck reservations cross a milestone, but does the electric Ford F-150 have a chance to catch up? And EVgo will provide one of the most important services to those who need fast charging when traveling. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric. If you are interested in everything that's going on in the amazing world of electric cars, well, you came to the right place. All you have to do now is click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Let's get to our top story. And I thought Elon Musk was joking or at the very least exaggerating when he tweeted a few weeks ago that Tesla would no longer use radars and rely fully on cameras for its self-driving and safety features. I guess we have different senses of humor. Now, at that time, no one has even noticed that news because they have never gotten that far in what is considered a pretty lengthy tweet from Elon. So everyone was talking about the first part of that tweet, the drama of having some FSD beta testers kicked out of the program. But this week, Tesla has announced that they really are ditching the radar in Model 3 and Model Y cars made for United States and Canada starting now. Now, there is no secret that Elon has never liked the LiDAR technology, but in this recent video, as he's talking smack about LiDARs, he's also kind of reinforced the necessity for radars. And in cars, it's freaking stupid. It's expensive and unnecessary. And as Andre was saying, once you solve vision, it, it's worthless. So you have expensive hardware that's worthless on the car. The, we do have a forward radar, which, which is low cost and is helpful, especially for occlusion situations. So if there's like fog or dust or, or you know, snow, the radar can see through that. If you're going to use active photon generation, don't use visible wavelength, because once you, with, with passive optical, you've taken care of all visible wavelength stuff. You want, if you, you, you want to use a wavelength that is occlusion penetrating like radar. Even though LIDARs have fallen in price significantly and some now cost only a few hundred dollars, the radars have been cheap for a while. As a matter of fact, I think I just saw some at the dollar store down the street. So this can't be a cost saving exercise. Now, what's interesting is that they have not announced it for the refreshed Model S or X, and it does look like European bound or made in China cars will all still have radars, but I'm assuming that will change soon as well. But this move does come with some issues. For example, during the transition, some cars equipped with Tesla Vision, as they're calling it, will be delivered with some of their features temporarily limited or disabled, including the auto steer that will be limited to a maximum speed of 75 miles an hour in a longer minimum following distance. The emergency lane departure avoidance will be disabled. And this is a big one. The parking lot summon, the smart summon, one of my most favorite features and the feature that makes it okay to forget where you parked your car will also be disabled. But in an ironic twist of electric car news this week, Where's Alanis Morissette when you need her? A Tesla in Palm Beach, Florida was spotted with luminar LiDAR sensors installed on its roof rack. Bloomberg has confirmed that the plates do indeed belong to Tesla and stated that an anonymous source said that Tesla has a contract with Luminar for testing and development. Isn't that ironic? Don't you think? I guess Tesla employees just want to make sure that they remember how much they hate the LiDARs by driving a car with one. It's like having that shirt that you hate, but it's still in your closet. So it's super easy to pick one when you're going out, especially if you only have two shirts. And guess which one I'm wearing right now. But GM Cruise, Waymo, Xpong Motors and others on top of the list of self-driving technology companies all 
have radars and lidars as part of their hardware choice. But here's another problem that this release is going to bring because Tesla has released this before the NHTSA had a chance to retest the safety feature. So these cars are no longer listed with the NHTSA for recommended safety. It's important to note that both of these Tesla models have received five stars for crash and rollover safety, which is the highest rating possible, and those are going to stay unaffected. Elon Musk has confirmed to Electric that all safety features are active in all cars now and just need the retest by NHTSA. But this, my friends, was not even the biggest news of this release. In my opinion, the biggest news has really slipped through the cracks. Because Tesla has made a big step in removing the hands on the wheel limitation that at one point or the other has annoyed every single Tesla owner who's had the autopilot feature and a texting app. I'm talking about the cabin camera, which is built into the rear view mirror in the Model 3 and the Model Y, which probably is responsible for more Tesla drivers wearing pants while driving. Well, that is finally being activated to help make sure people pay attention to the road while using the autopilot. We've seen the cabin camera's hacked feed from the famous Tesla hacker green, and it looks very promising, but the steering wheel torque sensors are still in effect, at least for now. Now, cabin camera could also bring a lot of other cool features like the one in EQS, where you don't have the left right switch between the side mirrors for you to adjust, it will automatically adjust the mirror at which you are looking using the cabin camera. GM and Ford currently sell cars with camera-based eye tracking systems that have the same purpose. I did try to fool the one in the new Bolt EUV when I had a chance to drive it, but apparently my eyes don't lie. And that's not a good look for someone who just bought a house in Vegas. For more, we turn to the Inside EVs and Forbes contributor who always wears pants when he drives his Tesla, camera or not, Tom Malogny. But before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored and this is our new sponsor. So welcome to the family flow. The Home X5 is a great and durable home charger that allows you to schedule, monitor and optimize your charging via a mobile app with 24 7 support get one using the discount in the description of this video and by newer charge check out the smart splitter a device that can charge two cars at the same time without spending a ton of money on rewiring your home get one today and use the discount code in the description of this video all right tom so this was quite ballsy of elon to kick out even the radar i know he didn't like lidars but radars you know, they don't even cost that much. So what could it be? I mean, they must think they're ready. Tesla must think that, you know, their software, uh, the, how they've, you know, continued to improve it with a camera only system must be ready for prime time. All right. Now, the second question is why now? Because they did lose the safety ratings and a couple of features, which seems to be something that will probably gain back in a couple of weeks. So what's the rush? Yeah, you would think that when they decided to stop shipping cars with the radar, that the, the, the camera-based system and all, everything would be fully baked and ready to make an, a quick transition without any type of interruption in service of any you know, safety features or any you know, autonomous driving features. But that's not the case. I don't know, that kind of baffles me. Who knows, maybe they had some kind of um, supplier issue and, uh, you know, there's all kind of uh, supply chain problems going on right now in the automobile industry. Maybe they, they were having supply chain problems and they said, all right, well, they, this made the decision for us. Let's end the radar now and, and do our transition, even though they were just not quite 100 percent ready yet. Now, you know, this only separates Tesla uh, from the rest of the companies that are trying uh, to, uh, to develop the self-driving technology even more because everyone else is using lighters uh, and, and radars. So could it be that both camps will uh, come to the same uh, level five autonomy technology sooner or later? Or do you think one has to be a winner and the rest would have to be the losers? So this is above my engineering pay grade, but I have talked to industry experts and 
while some of them have said, you know, um, you know, you can't, it doesn't hurt to have that redundancy of radar and LIDAR. I have talked to people that know what they're talking about and said, you know, they absolutely can do this with just cameras. Uh, it's just a tremendous, it's almost like it's more work to, to make it work with just a camera based system. Uh, but that, that, that the people in the industry that, that know have told me that, yeah, eventually they can get it to work, but it's almost like, why would you want to do that without the help of radar and LIDAR? You can do it, but you know, it almost seems like, you know, you, you're, you're passing up on technology that would make it easier for you to do it. Now, a, a feature that was, uh, that's now going to be enabled as well with this update that I think a lot of people kind of overlooked, though I think it's one of the biggest things like this year that came out of the FS, FSD releases, is the fact that they're now using and monitoring the drivers with, with the inside camera, which essentially will probably lead to uh, pretty much canceling the uh, hands on the wheel, eyes on the road rule, which kind of the reason I never liked it. Um, do you think that this is a better way of monitoring uh, the drivers than an actual physical uh, torque sensors? Well, I, I like the addition of it. You know, I, I hope they don't eliminate the torque sensors just yet. I don't think the system is ready to do that. Uh, but when it is ready, yeah, I think that 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 that's a, the next step in the evolution is, you know, the, that driver monitoring. And so you don't have to sit there and constantly get nagged um, to put your hands on the steering wheel. You know, I mean, I have a Tesla Model 3. I drive one. I don't know if it's quite ready yet just to rely on the monitoring. But, hey, you know, um, let, let, let's see where this takes us. Now, this feature is kind of late to market if you think about it. You know, GM and others have been using it for a while. But there are other features that you can do with, uh, with, camera, with the inside camera rather than just monitor the driver. Do you think uh, essentially Tesla just created an opportunity to add tons of really cool AI features? Or do you think they'll just limit themselves to the, this particular purpose? Yeah, I don't think it'll be limited to this particular purpose. I don't know what where they're going with it, but um, you know, I th there are, as you mentioned, a lot of things that this could uh, be connected to. So you know, I'm I'm sure Tesla has a plan to 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 add some other type of features with it. It'll be interesting to see. It'll also be interesting to see how many Tesla owners put one of those little camera blockers above it. You know, where so people can't quote unquote spy on you. Um, I think you're going to see that with some people doing that. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting how that, what will happen with the system if you do that, if you decide to, to block that little camera. As always, don't forget to subscribe to Tom's YouTube channel. I put that link in the description of this video. Let's move on to the next story. And everyone has been anxiously waiting for the very first real you know what that means, electric truck from a startup or a legacy manufacturer to get delivered. And you'll have to take a few more pills of your anxiety meds because it will be delayed for another month. That's right, the Rivian launch edition is delayed by a month because of a few small issues like the ongoing chip shortage. There's no surprise there. The service setup and get this, delays on shipping containers. Yeah, Rivian has forgot to pick up a few moving boxes from a friend which is kind of cute, but that's why there is Craigslist, Rivian. And people are freaking out, and I'm not really sure why. I mean, Lucid has delayed the deliveries of the air by almost a year, and this week Tesla has announced that the Model S Plaid has been delayed by another week, according to their PR department, that is Elon's Twitter account. And honestly, I don't really know a single first electric car model that has arrived on time from any manufacturer. I had another conversation about this topic with Tom Malogny and I posted that for my premium members. If you are not one, it's very easy to join by clicking on the join button. Let's move on to the next story and we're going to talk about Lucid, which I just mentioned. And even though the deliveries are delayed, but the user experience is here. That's right, Lucid has unveiled their UX, which actually I can argue that user experience is probably one of the most important things in the upcoming cars nowadays because they are becoming more of the gadgets 
than the actual cars. The Lucid UX has some really cool and yet simple features. Everything is designed for the driver to optimize ergonomic reach. That means that old farts like me don't have to pull their backs when reaching to change air conditioning. Another cool feature is the smart drawers. They're kind of like widgets that can be pulled down and essentially dropped from one screen to the bottom center screen, which will display more information. How cool is that? And did I mention that the bottom screen can actually retract? Also very cool. And another feature is the facial recognition means that saved preferences are auto loaded after you sit down and hopefully by the time delivery start, the software won't have to deal with masks. Amazon Alexa is also going to be part of Lucid Air, but it does need to have a pretty extensive list of commands. The experience needs to be as good as what you and I have in our living rooms. Otherwise, this may just become a shortcoming. Passengers can also get an in-car seat massage during charging, which by the way, not only is free for three years with Electrify America, but also at the industry top speed of 350 kilowatts. Let's move on to the Cybertruck. And according to the crowdsourced Cybertruck reservation tracker, that's right, somebody created that, the total reservation number has just crossed 1 million reservations. That's right, 1 million people have dished out $100 of their hard-earned money to tell their friends that they're almost Cybertruck owners. But what does it really mean? Judging by the fact that Tesla has actually sold a relatively small percentage of its Model 3s to the reservation holders, the reservations don't appear to mean that much at all. I've held many reservations myself, including two of the Model 3, one of the e-tron and Byton, and now the Cybertruck, but the only one that I have actually converted was my ID4 reservation. The all-electric Ford F-150 has gathered $45,100 reservations in 48 hours, and this could be a real tug of war between the two. And I don't mean the one staged by Tesla that you're looking at right now, but the bottom line is this. The electric trucks are finally here and we should all be excited. EVgo has just launched a feature which I thought was a must have for any fast charging network where you can actually reserve your charger ahead of time like your airplane seat or a restaurant table except for in this case it's always a reservation for one battery. EVgo is testing this feature in 17 locations first, including one near me here in Sacramento. It is certainly a great feature and EVgo is a network that needs it the most because most of its locations have only one or two chargers. Now, I don't think a lot of people know this, but EVgo is the largest public, which means non-Tesla, charging networks here in the United States with over 800 locations, and it is the first one to be fully powered by renewable energy. Now, EVgo is not the first one to implement the reservation system. ChargePoint has been doing it for a while, but neither Electrify America nor Tesla Supercharger Network has that capability right now. Now, there's a bit of a bad news here because EVgo is a bit behind on building chargers that it promised for their partnership with GM, but GM is letting it slide right now because, you know, building a charging network is kind of hard. That's why GM is not willing to do it themselves. All right, don't forget to join my premium membership so you can watch my second interview with Tom about Rivian delivery delays and many other exclusive videos. All you have to do is click on the join button and voila, you are part of our exclusive club. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.